Okay, in this video we're going to cover how to do blend shapes and attaching the mesh to the character rig. Um, so what blend shapes are is basically, they're, they're typically used for facial expressions, they're blending between two different uh, shapes. So if I take for example, let's say the blinking eye, it blends between an eye blink and his eyes wide open, and I can pick lots of different um, uh, shapes, let's say brow down, I could put both his brows down, I can blink his eyes so it's like uh, in frustration or something. Um, I could do a brow up if I wanted to, reverse this one so his brows come up. And so you can change different blend shapes and whatever you pre-model you can uh, match in there. All right, so that's what blend shapes are. And then the rigging, we're gonna attach the character mesh uh, called binding the mesh to the rig. And so when you start moving them, the character mesh will attach and move around with the rig. All right, so that's what we're going to be covering this lesson, or this uh, tutorial. Um, let's jump over to where we last left off with. So in the last video, we covered on how to um, finish up the rig. So the rig has been finished at this point. If I turn it back on, we can see that we have the joints in place. And if I were to grab the root control, you can see that it moves the character around. And if we grab the global control, it moves all of the uh, entire character rig around. All right, so that's where we left off with. Uh, so now the first thing let's uh, start off with is um, taking a look at blend shapes. So let me hide the joints. I don't need to see those at the moment. All right, so what we have here for blend shapes, I've already made uh, several of them. Actually, let me turn off the curves as well. I don't need those. So show, nerves, curves, and it'll hide the curves. So that makes it a little easier to see. All right, so if I turn on my blend shapes layer, I have a bunch of uh, character expressions I've already pre-modeled, and you can have lots of different types of expressions. You could have a blend shape that is just a specific shape, uh, whereas I made um, one for the left eye blink, and then over here is the right eye blink. This is uh, left eyebrow down, this is the right eyebrow down. And because they're all unique and that's the only change on this face, I can make each of these a separate control, and I can uh, pick and choose which expression I want. Now, if you were to make um, one whole face that just makes a certain expression on him, you could switch and transition between his regular face to that a certain uh, very specific shape if you want to. So you can make lots of expressions. Um, there's lots of um, different ideas out there. You could, um, you could even Google search um, blend shapes and get lots of different uh, ideas of what other people's expressions have done. Um, but this is um, pretty simplistic on how to do this. It's uh, just basic um, turning off and on shapes. You can mix and match. Um, and if you do have, uh, you can put multiple on there, like you can have the uh, brow down on one and the brow up on the other side, but if you mix and match the same brow, let's say brow up and brow down right here, it's going to blend out and kind of become uh, even again because you're mixing two different ones on top of each other. So in some cases it's helpful to have different choices, some cases you might want to finish one. Um, either way, uh, so let's uh, take a look at how to make some of these blend shapes. Um, uh, to make a blend shape, we click on the original mesh. Let's unreference it so I can grab the mesh. Uh, so we take one of these things and we're going to press Control D to duplicate it. And then I can move it over to, let's say, here. And so now I have an exact copy of the final mesh. Um, and the way the blend shape works is it has to be an exact copy. So if I were to go and like uh, smooth this or modify any uh, geometry or add polygons, it's not going to be the same mesh anymore, so it can't um, transition between the blend shapes. So you have to use the exact same mesh. So when you're finalized on your face and you're sure that's the last face you're gonna go with, you're not gonna make any more changes, then go ahead and start making some blend shapes. But if you wanna fine tune your original some more, do that before you start making the blend shapes. Um, also, I didn't put the hair attached to them. The hair was a separate piece. Um, it kinda saves on polygons from so having to make all these extra pieces. But for the final rig, when doing painting weights, it's now a separate piece. So I can't add it back to the face anymore because it'll mess up the blend shapes because it's two separate objects. Um, so that's something to take into account. If you want to attach this hair, hair first, you can have all your pieces of hair attached on every one of these. And um, you can play around and have the hair even deform if you want to. Um, but I didn't have the hair attached. All right, so let's go with um, making some modifications. So it's relatively simple. Let's take the original, or the, the duplicated one, and let's rename this, um, I guess, blend um, puffy cheeks. So I'll give them some puffy cheeks. And so all these are um, blend shapes with, uh, actually that's locked. 
I'll unlock that. All right, so all these are blend shapes. And this is, I named them blend left eye blink, and this is blend uh, left brow down. So this is a blend puffy cheeks, kind of keep things organized. Um, and you don't need to uh, delete your uh, history here. Actually, don't delete the history, and uh, you don't need to modify or delete any freeze any transformations. Uh, we kind of want to keep those transformations, so when we hide it, we'll stick it on its own blend shape layer, turn it off, and you won't see those anymore. Um, you can delete these out of your scene once you've applied the blend, but if you ever need to make a change, you won't have the original to make the change. So you can save file space by deleting them, but um, be careful that if you do delete them, you can't go back and edit your shape anymore. You'd have to make a whole new one. Um, so it's best if you want to delete them, make a separate file copy. So save a file with all your shapes in there and then delete it and then save that as a separate file and give that to the animator to animate with. Uh, so there's ways around that if you want to try to save in file space, but this shouldn't be too much. All right, so we'll take the uh, shape right here and let's go to right click, go to vertex mode. And instead of grabbing one vertex at a time, if I take the move tool and I double click it, it pops out this tool setting right here. So I close that. So double clicking the tool uh, move will bring out this. I'm gonna scroll down here to soft selection. And with soft selection checked, I can grab, let's say, I guess this joint or this uh, vertex. And I can also turn reflection on underneath of it. By turning reflection on, it'll grab both sides for you. And that's rather convenient. If, you're, uh, if you don't have a perfect symmetry, it might be a little more difficult, but um, reflection works pretty well. And what soft selection does, instead of pulling one specific point, you can grab a wide variety of points. So if I hold the B key for brush, so holding B on the keyboard, and then uh, left mouse button and sliding left and right, I can scale the size of the brush. So I'm going to scale it to something uh, relatively large, and then I can pull, and it starts puffing out his lips by doing so. I can pull it this way some, and let's say I grab right here, so kind of near his lips a little more, and pull this out some more. So he has some really puffy lips, and I'll grab right here. Sometimes it doesn't work so well with reflection on, but it looks like it's working pretty well. But I can turn it off just in case to keep it uh, symmetrical. So let me start up here and down there. So I have both of these, and I'll pull out the front a little bit more. So he has uh, puffy lips like he's holding his breath or something. All right, we'll go back to object mode. So we have his lips puffed out now. And the way we apply a blend shape is you click the uh, modified one first. The very last thing you click, you hold shift and grab the original face that you want to have and hold all the changes to. Um, and also delete your history before you select it because you don't want to have extra stuff sitting here. So I don't already, I don't have any at the moment, so that's fine. Uh, so first one is the shape, the end, the last one is the end result. We'll go over to the animation tab right here, create deformers and blend shape. Uh, you can check some of the options if you want. Um, you can put a shape here if you wanted to call it um, a specific uh, name. So you can call it facial shapes if you want to. Uh, advanced uh, deformation, you don't need to. Um, I guess front of chain is kind of important also. Uh, so we'll put that on there. And then facial shapes. So, all right, we'll apply that or just press create. And what happens is, is it takes this and applies it here. But we don't actually see any change yet. So I click off that and you see there's a difference or they're not the same yet. I click on the one that is now in control and I click on the facial shapes that I just made. And I can take the puffy cheeks blend and set that to one and it modifies this one. Uh, so rather than like which you could key, you can key the selected if you want to and animate with this um, method. Uh, but you can also pull up uh, under the window, animation editors and blend shape. You can pull up a blend shape uh, box and you can make this bigger and smaller depending on how much uh, space you need. Um, and so what this does is you can slide the slider up and down. So I can click off of his face now, uh, which will make this easier to see, and I can slide up and down. And so you have him like, I guess, huffing and puffing now. I said he's uh, changing. Cool. And again, you can key this with animation, so you can key these different effects and create different things. So it's you have your own window dialog box that can transition between the two of these. And uh, if you click on the original while this one's in motion, 
and you go back to vertex mode and let's say you make some more applications, uh, whatever you change here will still affect the original. So you can keep further modifying your blend shape after you've already applied it. Uh, so that's great. You just can't change your original mesh and add and extrude and, and merge and combine different things and um, heavily change your topology uh, or else they won't match anymore. All right, so once that's been done, um, what we want to do now uh, is generally you want to do all your blend shapes at the same time. So right now I just have one applied. But if I were to take, let's say, these two and these two, and I were to try this again by grabbing this guy and saying create to form as a blend shape, it'll create another blend shape, but they're two different stacks now. So if I scroll down, you can see that they're not in the same row. And if they're not in the same row, one of them will overwrite the other one. So let's click off of this guy. All right, so if I scroll this up and down, you can see there's no change occurring. Now if I take this one, there's again no change occurring because it's overwriting the other one. So if I slide this one down, you can see this one still works, but once it reaches zero at the bottom, now the other ones will take effect. So what you want to do is put all your blend shapes on at the same time. Otherwise, one will take effect and you basically lose your ability to use all your other blend shapes. They don't, they don't work anymore at that point. All right, so in order to fix that, um, we can go over here to select the original guy and make sure it's nothing that we really need on here. Make sure his face gets reverted back to the original position. Um, so click off that. So it looks like he's on the original position at the moment. So I can take this guy and edit, delete by type, history, and that'll wipe out the blend shape transformations we have, or you can press Control-Z to go back. Uh, so once we have that done, let's say I grab both of these, both of these, this one, and then the final one last, and then we'll go create deformers blend shape. And that puts it all in one row. So now that they're all in one row, I uh, click off there. I guess I can hide my other shapes now. Uh, and this one I can add to the same layer. So right click, add selected objects, and that drops it to the same layer. So they're all hidden there now. Um, and so now I can go and take him and blink. I can have his brow go down also. Um, and I can have him, have him puffy cheeks at the same time. So all the blend shapes will work as long as they're in the same row. Um, or it doesn't have to be rows. You could also have it set as uh, orientation, uh, horizontal. So you could have sliders like this uh, if you wanted to go with that option. So I'll put it back to vertical. So that's how the blend shapes work. So you basically uh, just take your original, duplicate it, modify it to whatever shape you're looking for, and then just apply all of them at once to your original mesh. And you have the option to key, just like um, in any type of animation you're working on, uh, key your animation to occur different, um, different effects. All right, and that pretty much covers how to do blend shapes. Uh, so, um, uh, let's cover how to attach our character. So I'm going to slide all these sliders back down. Alright, so the sliders are back down, so he's back to his original shape. Uh, let's take and go over to... Um, let's close out that as well. So, the first thing, before we start combining, or before we attach our mesh to our object, to our rig, uh, we want to clean up our scene a little bit. So, if I go over to, let's say, the window hypergraph hierarchy and take a look uh, I can let's pull this out a little more you can see we have this is the main rig right here if I click this button right here it'll show everything and you can see there's a gigantic amount of, um, of pieces so if I zoom in really close and really close you can see all these are different parts of the uh, character so that's that little X right there and that's that little X and that's that. And so all these are different pieces. So rather than putting all these different pieces into the game engine, it's probably best to combine them into a single mesh. Uh, and we have to be careful how we combine those into a single mesh. So um, it depends. Uh, if you're going to the game engine, the fewer pieces you have going in as one solid piece, the better. But if you're going into, let's say, um, leaving this in my for animation, you can just leave it all as a separate uh, groups and you can group it together and this way you have more ability to go back and forth um, but it just makes it easier to combine them for a game engine to clean all this up so it's a lot less there all right so i already have the blend shapes in a layer but let me un um, open that up and then i'll take all the blend shapes i have let's say grab all of these 
And if you hold Control and Shift and over select everything, it'll always add. Whereas if you don't have that and you just hold Shift, it'll unselect and swap back and forth. But if you hold Control and Shift, it'll always add to your selection. Uh, so we take all these, and I'm going to press Control G to group, and it puts all the blend shapes in one giant line right here. So it makes the uh, hypergraph hierarchy a little bit cleaner, so I'm going to leave these here. Again, you can delete your blend shapes after you apply them, but you can't make changes if you decide to adjust them later. So now we just have this long row of uh, pieces to figure out what, what is what. Uh, so I'm going to start taking some pieces and start figuring out what I want to combine. So let's say uh, for this piece, um, I have, and let me uh, hide these IK handles because if I try and grab, it's going to take precedence to try and grab that first. So let's go show, and I'll turn off IK handles. All right, so that should make that a little easier. So let me grab all these pieces now. And uh, let me, actually, let's grab everything first. So grab everything and press 1 on the keyboard. So we're back to the original shape. So when we send it to Game Engine, we'll see that this is a really boxy looking object. Uh, you can see all the contours on the edge. And so we want to make sure that all of our pieces are about the same resolution. So if I look at this, this is a lot lower resolution than the body. So I want to uh, scale everything uh, proportional. Uh, the more polygons we add, the longer it will take to paint the weights though. So try not to go too high, but try and keep things proportional about the same uh, resolution. So let's take this one and this one and this one and we'll go to um, change this to animation mode to polygon mode and then I can go over to mesh and smooth. Uh, before I do that let me switch over to custom panel and by doing this I can go to mesh smooth hold the control and shift and click on smooth and that adds the option to here. So now I don't have to constantly go through the menu. Now I have a shortcut sitting on my uh, menu so I can smooth that. It smooths it out uh, rel relatively nice. I can take this one and also if I go to the options right here, um, if you scroll down, if you have geometry borders selected and you try and smooth this, you'll see that it keeps the outside edge because this is a cut piece and so it's keeping that border edge. So if I uncheck the geometry borders and then press apply, it'll round the, um, the whole piece because it won't keep the borders. So extra little uh, helpful note there. Uh, we grab this, this side and we can apply that again. We'll take these, shift, and then we'll, once these three are connected or selected, I can go mesh, uh, combine, and I'll do, add that to the menu as well. So this is combine, boom. So now these are one piece. And since his, um, the bolts are on the shoulder are always going to be connected, then they might as well be one piece. Uh, the same thing here, uh, the shoulder armor, uh, actually the leather pieces, the bolts are never really going to separate from that, so I might as well do the same thing here. I'll smooth it, and then I'll combine it, so they're all combined now. And so just keep going through your scene and figure out which parts um, are likely always going to be sitting and touching that um, won't ever be separated. So that's smooth and uh, combined, and I could do multiple at once. I can grab all of these and smooth all of these and I might as well combine all of these as well. So I'll take this one and this one and this one as well and combine those. This one still needs to be smooth and then I can go and combine that. Uh, so what this does is it makes one solid piece. So if I were to try and move this, you can see that it's one solid armor piece now. And so that's not really going to bend for me. Uh, we have to. What we should do is start figuring out what is going to be a bendable piece and what is going to be a hard solid piece. So everything on his body that's going to be squashy and stretchy, I want to make one solid piece. Um, if you're doing again for animation, all you have to do is just group everything. Uh, you could just uh, select all the pieces you want in the same group. Let's say all of this except for maybe the sword because it might be its own separate object or something. And you could press Control G. And what that does is it makes a nice straight line and groups everything as one solid group. And you can probably leave it at that. Um, but again, some things are easier if you paint the weights together. Um, but for game engine, it's best if you can combine as most as you can. So I'm going to Control Z that. And you can see all these pieces are yellow. 
So the more I keep combining, the easier it gets to go through the seam. Um, so uh, just keep going through the scene, just kind of figure out what matches topology wise. So that's a lot of polygons, and this is very few. So if I take these, I should probably again do these uh, smooth to kind of add a little more topology to them. Uh, this one again is pretty low on the polys, and I'll combine those. And then I might as well take all th of these and combine these. All right, so this is one solid piece now. And again, because it's on its arm and it's going to bend with its arm, I might as well make that combined here. So this is now part of his, um, his body mesh. So when the, his arm bends, it'll bend with these pieces as well. All right, and just keep going through and figure out what is attached and what shouldn't be attached. And I've already gone through and done this, so I'm going to save you the time of having to do it again. So I'm going to jump over to the next scene right here. And so right here, let me turn off the curves again. All right, so what we have here is that I've combined everything into a solid mesh. So I have the blend shape layer, which has all of the different blend shapes that the character has. And then I have the rig layer, or uh, rig uh, global control, which will uh, contain the entire rig in one big stack. And then over here I have the camera's front and side view, my two image planes, and then the hero mesh is the big group. So once I combined as much as I wanted to, I also went to and grouped it. Um, and if I switch back to this other one, let's say here, the armor again has, even after combining all the stuff, it has lots of history now because of all the uh, combining. So I want to get rid of the history. So that's edit, delete by type, history. And that'll clear off a couple extra pieces miscellaneously scattered through there. So switching back over to here, uh, so these pieces, uh, so I kept a leather piece here because that's kind of squashy and stretchy as it bends his um, shoulder. Another one there. Then this is the whole shoulder piece that's all going to be attached. It's, it's going to bend with his arm in unison, so I just decided to merge all that into one. Uh, his whole uh, base mesh, all the side pieces, the belt, uh, the arms, the uh, gem on the gauntlet. His shoes were already connected. Uh, so all these pieces I just grouped in, or combined into one solid mesh and deleted all the history on that. Uh, the next one is the bag. Add a couple pieces, the string and the other bag parts, so I combined that into one piece. And then the chest armor is now one solid piece. The sheath is connected to it. And then over here we have uh, his hair, which I didn't combine before I did the blend shape, so I can combine it now because it'll mess up the blend shapes. And then I have one eye. Uh, the head, the other eye, um, the scarf, and the sword. And so that's all made from pieces. I want to keep these separate pieces. The scarf is separate because in the game engine it can uh, calculate physics and blow in the wind when I run around. Uh, the sword, if I ever swap out different swords, I want that to be a separate sword. The chest armor, I probably could combine to the body mesh because it'll bend with them, but I don't want the armor to flex, so I left it as a separate piece. And this needs to be attached to specifically to the arm. Uh, so that's a separate piece as well. All right, so that kind of organizes up the scene. And um, another note on the blend shapes. Um, I can, let's see, close that. All right. So I can uh, smooth this afterwards if I go to, let's say, the blend shapes right here. I have the blend shapes here. And if I pull up the blend shape tab, Actually, I don't think I have the blend shapes attached to this one yet, so let me jump back to this guy. If I pull up the blend shape option, um, window, animation editor, blend shape. All right, so the blend shapes uh, at this point work. I can do all the stuff uh, that I want to because they're separate, uh, because they're exact copies of each other. But once they're copies and I have the facial shapes applied, I can still go and mesh smooth on top of that. So now this face is a lot more smooth than this face, but the smooth is applied after the facial blend shapes, and thus the shapes will still occur. So if you do decide to change something and delete the history, make sure you delete out the smooth as well. Um, or actually delete it out before you uh, don't delete the history because it'll save your changes. You want to get rid of this or undo it and not saving your changes. Otherwise, um, it'll stay permanent if you try and delete history with the poly surface 
poly smooth on there. So you'd want to click the poly smooth and set the um, uh, nope, not facials. And select the smoothing that you applied, set it to zero, and then delete the history, and that'll um, set it back to normal. But uh, for purposes of this, is that you can smooth it after you've applied a blend shape, and this way you can get higher resolution on your um, your face, so that everything kind of stays a nice, consistent topology and um, looks detailed. All right, so that uh, covers the. Uh, primary um, goals of the uh, combining and stuff and also you want to go through and name things so let's switch over to here so I've already gone through and named everything so this is the leather this is the chest armor this is the body uh, this is the hair so they're combined all their transformations are frozen actually except for the hair modify freeze transformations so that's frozen um, so they're all frozen, the history's been deleted and everything, it's nice and clean and organized. And so now that our mesh is finally finished and ready, uh, now we can start um, painting weights. So to paint weights, uh, we need to see our joints. So I'm going to go show joints, and I can see the joints. And we want to select uh, the joints that we want to apply it to. I can either select the specific joints, or just click on whichever joints I want to apply. Or I can go all the way to this root joint, which will select everything for me. So if I take the root joint and then I click on, let's say hold shift and grab the body mesh, I can apply this. Uh, so what, what I'll do with this one is I'll go to uh, skin, which again is under animation. So skin, bind skin. Uh, I have the option of, of smooth bind, interactive skin bind, and rigid bind. I'll save rigid bind for more of the armor. Rigid meaning it's harder and it's going to not squash and bend as much. Uh, interactive is a uh, way of making it faster and easier, and smooth bind is a traditional method of uh, just regular painting weights. So I'm going to try interactive skin bind to see what we can get. Pull up the options, and this is joint hierarchy. Um, you could do selected joints, uh, but everything's selected anyway, or actually only the root is. But joint hierarchy is fine because I have the root selected. Uh, closest distance, closest volume, all this is fine, and the capsule is what it's going to be creating. So we'll click on bind skin. So by doing bind skin, it then binds the um, mesh to our character. Let's minimize that. And so we're currently running the capsule tool right now. What the capsule tool does is allows you to pick uh, different um, different settings or di di um, where your mesh is going to be deformed. So let me pick something. Let's say the um, Let's go with the back joint. Uh, so what we have here is if I pull the side out, uh, you can see the colors are changing. I can pull this side out as well. And so the more I pull out, I don't want to go too far because they'll start overlapping the arms. Um, the red means that this uh, particular joint, the back joint, which is this uh, bone right here, this joint uh, between this circle and that circle, that one joint will have all this influence, the red being the primary influence and then fading off to blue which has almost no effect at all and then gray is nothing. So I'm going to slide this up and slide this down to kind of center it on here so this one bone we can see here is uh, giving the most influence to this specific area. And then I can click on the chest joint and again repeat the same process. So the chest can slide up here um, and probably slide, well, I'll leave the chest affecting the um, upper part of the scarf or the uh, collar and then I'll pull this out wider so that the chest has the option to reach the shoulders and I'll pull this out forward I guess. I'll probably pull this out a little wider so it does affect the arms a little bit um, and maybe down a little bit lower. So there is somewhat of an overlap between them, but uh, between the back and the chest, but that's fine. So there's a quick little way to rough in where we want the weights to occur at. And then I can grab, I keep going down, let's say the arm joint, and it's already set to symmetrical with the reflection on there. Uh, so that's really helpful. Uh, so I'm going to slide this up so it stops right where his um, elbow is and slide this down so it doesn't uh, mess with um, too much extra. And shrink that in. So I'm trying to keep uh, as much as I can consistent to a certain area. And that should 
uh, that work. Okay, we'll call it good enough. We'll grab the next one, the elbow area, and that's already pretty close to the elbow anyway. Uh, this one I'll slide it up to the wrist, and then I'll expand it a little wider. Expand this one a little wider. And so that's pretty much red. So this joint right here will have, will have full influence on this polygon area. Uh, the wrist, uh, this one got a bit skewed it looks like. So I'll take this and slide it back there. Um, I can also rotate this. If I take the rotation tool, I can rotate where the capsule is occurring at. Let's pull that a little bit closer inwards. Pull this a little further down so it covers more of the hand. And then I'll rotate it a little more in place. Pull that down some more. All right, so the wrist will have mostly control over the hand area. And then you get down to the finger area where it gets a little more uh, meticulous. All right, and you can keep going further and further and play with all the different fingers and try and figure out which finger should have the uh, influence that it should have. This one, way too much. And that's the other side. Okay, that's good enough for now. So what, what we just basically did, and I didn't play with the legs yet, but if I go to the move tool, and I, um, I need my curves back, show curves, I can grab the root control and move him around. And so he pretty much um, bends as well as he possibly can uh, without doing any extra work. So the capsules are a quick way of um, adjusting things. Uh, if I bend him down, you can see where his knees are kind of really uh, squashing there and his ankles are really getting a bit messed up um, that's mainly because of the capsule the capsule is not in the right place if you want to get back to the capsule and you don't see it here for some reason that would be under uh, skin edit smooth skin interactive skin bind tool which is what this is and then you can pick the right joints let's say I click on or you could just um, I right click on the joint you want and go to edit joints Nope, oh, that's not it. Um, okay, I forget what the shortcut is. Yeah, I'm not sure what the shortcut is anymore, I forget. But uh, you can go over here to... All the way at the bottom. Alright, so the this would be the left thigh. So I click on this one, and you don't get the option um, at first until you select the joint, um, and that uh, highlights it. So I can slide this here, slide this up, and so as you see that I'm, as I'm sliding it, it's deforming the mesh in a different method. So it's getting too much influence there, or too little influence, and so you wanna slide this into a, an area that looks like it's best fitting um, the influence. So slide that to there, I'll slide this up to about where his ankle should bend at, and it looks a little better. I'll take the, actually I don't need the reverse lock, I should probably hide that one. So I'll take the reverse lock from the bottom, and I'll go and say, uh, display, hide, hide selection, and it'll hide it. If you ever want to get it back, you have to go display and show, or find it in your outliner and show selection or show all or whatever uh, but we should never need to see the reverse lock joint so i'm going to click on this one and again play with this so bend this down to there pull this up to here and as you see the um, adjusting this will that should mostly take the whole amount anyway because it's the foot all right so now his leg bends a little more natural so by adjusting these um these capsules it seems to fix a lot of the problems uh, it's not quite perfect yet, uh, we'll, we'll have to fine tune some details, but for a quick um, run through it works pretty well. And then his head isn't quite attached yet, so we have to go and do that also. So let me zero out his um, translates. Boom, so he stands back up again. Let's hide the rest of the blend shape so I don't need those. And so we put that, uh, we've capsuled in the rough idea of what we want. So that's the first option. Um, the second option uh, it's going through, let's say, um, component editor. Uh, let's say we'll go with, um, we'll take the head and the hair, and then we'll grab the head bone, and we'll go to 
skin, bind skin, and I could try the interactive bind tool. Uh, I could also try smooth bind to show you what that does. Um, in either case, let's go, let's say smooth bind. Instead of uh, join hierarchy, I'm going to do selected joints so it applies all of his neck and head to the selected joints, which is pretty much just his head. It won't get to attach to his neck yet. So let me try and attach that to the neck as well. So the neck and the head will affect the, um, the, the neck and head joints will affect the neck or the head and hair. So I'll press apply or just bind skin. So that attaches it now. So now if I were to go and take his um, head and rotate his head, you can see that it rotates his head with uh, his hair. But it also bends the uh, collar so that needs to be adjusted some more. And I can take this and that makes a little more sense where he's bending uh, and his shirt's bending with him. And now I no longer need to see, actually I, I kind of still do want to see the joint so I'll leave that on there. Sometimes it gets a little hard to see with him on. Uh, so once that's uh, done, I probably should have applied the smooth before, nope, not yet. I'll apply the smooth afterwards this way I don't have to worry about uh, painting too many different polygons. Um, but you can see it sort of pops through his hair. So if I go to um, polygon mesh smooth, now it's smooth and the smooth is on top of the skin cluster which is the um, painting weights. So I can go back to here and still paint weights but have fewer, um, actually I still have to see a lot of polygons so it might be easier to leave the smooth off for now. Or you can change it interactively by changing your divisions here, put that at zero or something and then keep adjusting things. So depending how many polygons you want to work with, I'll put it back up to here to uh, show you guys. All right, so we have this here and the character can turn his head. Uh, so we want to turn it to the most extreme angle that he probably would likely be turning. Uh, if you can turn his head this far, um, you can see what side effects might be occurring. His jaw looks like it's getting a little distorted, so we might want to paint that. Um, and slide his head the other way. All right, let's put his head back. All right, so let's go check out Component Editor. I'll take this, and then what we'll say is uh, Window, General Editor, Component Editor, and that pulls up um, a list of uh, vertices. We're not actually on the vertices yet. Smooth Skins is what we're looking for in the tab, but there's no vertices selected. So I'm gonna go right-click on this guy, go to Vertex Mode, and I can't grab the vertices while the um, joints are on, so I'm going to hide the joints, and now I should be able to select all the vertices. And so that selects every vertice in the, um, in the area, and I can specifically attach them to certain things. So I'm going to hold the control key and deselect his entire neck, and so I'm going to say just the upper half, the um, head area, is completely attached to the head joint. So I can select down here and slide the mouse left and right until it goes all the way down. All right. So I should select everything, and I'm going to put a full weight value on that of one. Press enter, and that puts, uh, the, the entire head is completely affected by the neck, or the head joint. So if I click off that, the remainder now down here should be affected by both. So if I were to select these, you can see that the head and neck, both the both joints share these vertices. So that's what Component Editor does. It allows you to specifically put on which joints you want to have full influence. So if I go to rotate his head now, um, his hair and everything should have full effect on uh, where he's rotating, which it looks like in this case, um, his hair is kind of bleeding through so we have to kind of adjust that. And his neck also is having too, uh, too much effect on there. Uh, so we may wanna we have to play with some of the stuff. And then, so the last option now, besides component editor, uh, is painting the weights, which is a manual process, which does take a little bit of uh, a while. We'll go to animation mode again, skin, edit smooth skin. So we did interactive skin bind tool. Uh, now we're gonna use um, Paint Skin Weights Tool, and I'll pull up the option box. And so how this works is we need to, we can't select um, the object, the mesh. We have to go into, let's say, the Move Tool first, 
then we can grab the mesh and then we can pull up the paint weights tool which is the last one I have used here so it's still sitting there so now I can paint weights um, and I can't paint weights it says an X on there until I've picked the joint I want to paint it to so I pick the mesh I click the tool which is also up here skin paint weights um, after you select it first and then the last thing is pick the joint you want to affect so this would be let's say the chest joint so now I pick the chest white means full influence black means no influence so the chest has influence on all the upper area, which we would expect. Click down the arm joint, and the arm joint has this much influence, which also makes sense. And the elbow is down here, so we could add some more white around here if we want to make this a little sharper. And what we have right now is if I say I go to rotate and I try and rotate his wrist, you can see that it kind of bends his wrist and squashes it right there. So the capsule got pretty close, but not as accurate as we'd like it to be. So I click the mesh again. Go to the paint tool, the current selected joint is the elbow joint. I'll use replace at a full value of one. And when I paint now, it'll paint 100% white on this area. You want to be as uh, clean as you can. You can see it kind of overlapped a little bit. So I can switch to uh, zero value and paint that back over so his uh, his elbow won't have any effect on his hand all right so let's switch down to the next one the, the wrist the wrist shouldn't have any effect so I'm going to paint black all the way down to here Alright, so what that does now, if I go back to rotate and grab this and try and rotate, um, still not quite all the way there yet, so let's go back and check out some more stuff. Uh, let's check out the mesh, paint weight tool, uh, the wrist, looks like it doesn't have any influence, the elbow, it might not be 100% white yet. So let's slide that back up. There's some darker area sitting under there. All right, let's try that again. And still not completely there. So mesh, paint weights, and we can keep checking to make sure everything is, um, there's nothing else using it. Uh, yeah, the fingers aren't using it. Uh, the other fingers aren't using it. And on rare occasions, sometimes the opposite hand could possibly be using it. Um, or you could find other joints pulling at it. Uh, so we can keep playing and try and figure out where that's coming from. But let's switch back up to the uh, neck area where the neck was kind of popping out. And to make this a little easier, uh, what we can do is we can keyframe the character. So I can go to, say, frame one, and we'll take the rotate, and then I'll let's turn auto keys already on. Let's press S on the keyboard so it'll key everything. I'll go to frame eight. And then I'll rotate this direction so his head turns off to the side and then press S again. Press already on auto key. So now when I scale scroll through the timeline, I don't have to keep twisting him back and forth. Now I can see what's deforming. And this part needs to pop back out some more. So if I click the mesh, which is the back, go to paint weights tool, find the chest joint. This one should have 100% influence. Uh, and if the sword's getting in the way and other stuff, you can just click on the object itself, go to show, isolate, select, view selected, and it hides everything else and makes it a little easier to see. And then go back to paint weights tool. So th again, this should have 100% influence. If you want to make the brush bigger, you can hold the B key and slide it larger. And we're replacing at 100%, so that's completely white up here. So the chest should have full influence on that. Uh, let's click down to up to the back joint, doesn't have any effect, root doesn't have any effect arm, elbow, we're cool. So let's find the head now. So the neck joint, it looks like the neck is affecting this, so we don't want the neck to affect that. So we're gonna slide this down to zero and paint that back off. So the neck doesn't have any effect on the 
topology of the character, of the uh, back. So it might have a little bit of effect here, and you can go to the smooth tool at that point and kind of smooth it out a little bit so the neck, when the neck bends, will bend a little bit in front. I'll smooth out this part so it may bend a little bit. All right, let's take a look at how that turned out. So I slide this, and you can see it still slides um, a bit too much. So let's find out. Looks like the head joint is also using that. So we're going to replace the head with a zero, so the head shouldn't have any effect on here. Uh, we don't want to smooth, we want to replace. All right, so the head value of zero. Oh, uh, make sure opacity is set to one. If you put it to, uh, yeah, that's very annoying if you get opacity set to zero and you're wondering why it doesn't paint. So yeah, make sure opacity is set to one when you're painting weights. Um, and we're going to paint some more out there so the head shouldn't have any influence on any of this part. Uh, and then let's uh, scroll down a little further. Head end doesn't have anything, jaw. So none of those parts should have any um, effect on there. So now we go and check this. So when he rotates, uh, actually it's not even rotating. Show, view selected. All right, so that puts everything back. So when he, um, when he rotates his head, he should have uh, some squash and stretch here, but no squash and stretch or no, no deformations around there. So um, mostly weight painting is pretty much figuring out where things need to bend and how they should bend depending on what's, um, what's where. So I could probably use a little bit less and I could paint some more away from there. Alright, so let's uh, check this out. So paint weights tool. Let's see the uh, scroll down here to his neck. The neck could probably have a little bit less, so I can take that and set it to like 25% uh, or so and kind of paint that in there. Now let's see what that does. If I go to rotate. So looks like the uh, we've got one, but we still have the other one to adjust. And you can keep playing with that, trying to figure out what works. Uh, and the only last thing to cover is basically uh, when you do a um, show joints. When, you, uh, when you're ready to put like a hard surface on there, uh, you just bind it with a rigid um, bind. And the rigid bind, um, when you do the selected joints, you pretty much just hold it in place and it shouldn't bend at all. So when your character bends, uh, it should bend with, it, um, with the joint. And that should pretty much be everything. Um, so in order to save you the time of, um, of me painting everything, I'll just uh, show you the finished results so it'll be a little faster than that. Or that way. Alright, so and when the weights are finally done, uh, let's hide that. So we can see here that we have the weights already painted. Um, I can grab, let's say, the root control and I can move them around so he has all the painted weights now. When I take his hand and let's say move that upwards, uh, you can see that. Let's rotate his hand a little straight. Is that it pretty much bends where it needs to bend. Uh, you can uh, kind of get it, try and get rid of as much stretching as you possibly can. Over here we can see that um, it blends through a little bit up here. I see that it just needs a little more painting there. But generally, uh, the more you uh, adjust it, you can get them to uh, bend as you should bend pretty well. And the feet over here as well. Looks like he's off the ground a bit too much. Put him back on the ground, boom. Uh, so when he bends downwards, you can see the, nape, the legs uh, bend pretty well. It's about as well as you can get. All right, and so that's um, painting weights is figuring out uh, what part needs to have more influence over other parts. And, oops, put that back. All right, so hopefully uh, that makes sense. Uh, the last thing we can take into account is showing and hiding things. So let's go to joints over here. Uh, so if you, we have joints shown right here and you can always unshow those. But if you wanted to make sure no one ever sees those, uh, instead of showing the joints uh, off and on, uh, you could grab, let's say, the root joint, and then go over here to Display, Hide, and Hide Selection, and that would make it completely gone. So whether you're here showing joints or not showing joints, it's pretty much hidden. Uh, if you wanted to get them back, you would just go to 
window uh, or display show show all and it brings it back or you can specifically go over to the um, window outliner and find it wherever it is let's say the and you can hide the um, IKs as well so if you don't want to see these IK handles sitting out here um, yeah you just find out which uh, which ones it's attached to this should be the root control right here so this is the one I just hid so if I were to go and hide this again I think control H is hide so it'll hide it and you can see it's uh, grayed out now so I can right click that and show objects uh, joints actually no that's not going to work um, so click on this and then once you've selected the joint you want to show uh, window display show show selection and now it pops back because you can show what you picked on down here uh, so that's another way of uh, hiding things and making things seeable or not um, and that pretty much should cover everything uh, so you should have a finished rig at this point ready for animation so hopefully that makes sense and